uh, we're okay. really focusing on on bringing a really good product to market. meeting Guy German, CEO of Hokibo, developer of smart robotics in construction industry. You know what, I'm so much excited for this session because I think we are going to talk about robots. <laughs> Why you say robots with a quote? Because, you know, it's, it's being in construction, thinking of robot, doing a lot of job is something which is very cool to me and I think for the audience out there. So I'm pretty much, you know, interested to know more about your robot, your company in general. Yeah, we're doing actual robots. I mean, uh, not not quote unquote robots, but uh, you know the real hard hardcore thing. Right. Okay. So you know, guy, as you and I are from the construction industry, and we do understand the construction industry is really uh, you know conservative, traditional in a way. You know the way it performs. So what made you bringing you know the robot, uh, the technology in construction? Yeah, I think the way the, uh, the industries that needs uh, automation and require robotics are always industries yeah. that are conservative. So like get, going into uh, an industry that already has automation and already, you know, uh, is very efficient, then probably doesn't need uh, automation and robotics. So like that's the, the trivial place to go to. Okay. Uh, and this industry does require automation for for many many reasons for quality consistency, uh, labor shortage, uh, digitalization of processes that needs to be done in this industry and so forth. So, yeah, so that that's that's the right place to 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 be if you're looking for a, a good automation uh, practices. All right. So you know when when we say that there are. Um, problems related to technology, uh, labor, shortage of automation in our industry. I really would like to know your journey as a startup, you know, especially bringing in uh, this robot in construction. So how has it all started? What was your journey and motivation behind? Yeah, so uh, it, it was indeed a very interesting journey. Okay. Uh, we actually started uh, someone from the construction industry, a company that is uh, prefabricating swimming pools. Okay. Uh, so they had a prefab uh, factory, but they're also building uh, on-site uh, construction uh, for this industry. And they asked us to automate the process of uh, the fabrication of the swimming pools. And okay. uh, we have came from, uh, you know, from robotics and, and uh, tech uh, background. Okay. Uh, started looking at, at this challenge and it looks like a very, very technological challenging uh, uh, idea. But on the other hand, uh, practically for, for this specific application that they requested us to do, we said, okay, we can solve it, but it will require so much resources. And for yeah. such a small factory, it doesn't make sense. But hey, guys, maybe there is a room for innovation or to actually build a uh, startup company or to start something that uh, is dedicated to solve this problem and we found that specifically in swimming pools or they, their, their problem wasn't like the biggest problem in the world to solve. Yeah. Yeah. It was very challenging from the technological side but there wasn't such a big market for it uh, but the construction industry in general is a huge market yeah. and Construction industries have uh, uh, similar challenges that are more, uh, that can be more generalized. Okay. And so this company actually became our first investors. They, they put the pre seed uh, money and we founded together the, the Okibo, the company, in the early 2018. And uh, started focusing on uh, the construction sites 
indoor and specifically starting from applications that involve uh, finishing works, meaning plastering, uh, sanding, painting, joint staping, all sorts of applications that uh, are similar and it revolves uh, on uh, uh, wall and ceiling finish works. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, we we'll build Basically a Basically the finishing part uh, in construction in general. Yes, the, 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 the finishing part in construction, uh, focusing indoors, yeah. All right. So, does your robot have a name? Uh, no, we we actually look at it as a. Uh, it, it has a model. It's EG6 right now. Like it started from uh, EG2, three, and now we're we're in model EG6, which is, which is our uh, product. Okay. Uh, the one that we're uh, just now certifying and and uh, bringing to market uh, in large quantities. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's EG6, similar to R2D2 or C3PO. Uh, <laughs> okay. So are there no, any plans to, you know, change uh, the nomenclature and bringing something which is more, you know, uh, funny personal. and easy to remember? Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, so right now we're really in, in, a, in, a, in this, uh, you know, in the last uh, five years almost, uh, we're okay. really focusing on on bringing a really good product to market. Okay. And so we took away all the uh, marketing fluff and all, all the uh, the things that are uh, like, uh, we, we don't have even have a really good uh, design okay. uh, for the robot. It's, it's yeah. very uh, uh, built for uh, as an engineering uh, tool. Okay. And, uh, and also the name is also part of it. It's, uh, it's a functional model. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, maybe during time there will be uh, marketing and, and stuff like that. It will bring names and, and, and all that to, to the yeah. picture. But right but now, I, like, no, I totally agree that at this time, it's very important to focus on technology and in the engineering which is involved in the robot. Yeah. So we're, we have quite a lot of geeks in the company. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I, I think like working on, on, a, on a project that we, we know that and it's a very iterative uh, process. Yeah, uh, we've, we've built uh, as as you can understand from the model name, the EG6. Yeah, uh, we've we built a, a few prototypes. Every prototype is very different, and and every time it is built based on uh, you know on market feedback, on working uh, for long hours in projects uh, in the market and with with customers and with partners, and and so like having everyone focused on on the idea, the engineering ideas. Uh, and the problems, uh, I think, helps us uh, to get better motivations than focusing on like uh, the design of a product or yeah. having it like really cool name or stuff like that. So it's, it's, that, that it's deliberately uh, yeah. oriented to engineers. Yeah. But eventually, in order to grow and to succeed, uh, it's not enough to have a really really good product. It yeah. also needs the rest of it, and and so yeah, and but we're not there yet. So right now we are still in the it's it's the EG six model. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So you know, guy, uh, as you have rightly mentioned that right now you are working, uh, you know, in improvising the technology and the engineering which is involved in in construction of this uh, robot, but um, there is another fact. Uh, to our industry that it's it's very conservative and conventional in in a way it you know works so i really would like to know and can you address the ch challenges which you have faced or facing uh, you know in terms of penetrating in the industry how how is the industry accepting this technology yeah uh, that's a good question so uh we heard a lot from many other startups in the ecosystem that yeah, the construction industry, you'll find it very, very hard to yeah. get corporations from uh, GCs and from, from contractors that we work with. They're, they're, you know, they are used to what they're doing. But what we found is actually, first of all, uh, we found that there is always uh, in this industry, so we don't have to work with 100% of you know, all GCs in the world. But yeah. in this industry, there are always people who are uh, uh, innovative thinking. 
and, that's the point, yeah. And also, like, we're not trying to say, okay, look, we can improve your process, we can save you time or money, which we do, but uh, we actually solve a real critical issue that some of the GCs acknowledge the fact that, that it's yeah. going to be even on the verge of a crisis in the next coming years, which is the shortage of labor. They just don't have workers. And they are looking for solutions. However, they are looking for solutions. They are not looking for, you know, helping you to develop your product. They want, most of them, they just want a working product. They wanted to, to okay, show me if it works, I'll buy hundreds of this. Yeah, yeah. I need it. Uh, but I need to see it, that it works. So th this is the, the uh, the majority of, of, of uh, Response. companies, however, yeah, yeah, but some of them do have a uh, budget for innovation and yeah. they have the patience to, uh, you know, to look uh, at a work in progress as well. And also we are fortunate to have been working with material manufacturers, uh, which by definition have large R and D uh, teams and, you know, they are, uh, really familiar with uh, uh, innovation and R and D yeah. because they are developing materials uh, on a regular basis. So they're not like GCs that you know they just need to get a project done. They are uh, corporates that uh, know the the value of uh, of developing of yeah. developing product and development development process. And uh, and yeah, and so 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 uh, yeah, our experience is quite. Good from the industry. Uh, so, so no, been... I mean, I'm really happy that you know industry is somehow moving. Uh, you know, in terms of acceptance, and as it's known that there is a lot of resistance towards change, but you know, knowing your experience, it really indicates that slowly, but there is an acceptance towards change. Yeah, I really believe that that anyone, even like software companies, uh, applications, hardware, doesn't matter. You bring a really good solution, a good product. Uh, so there's maybe there's not a lot of uh, patience uh, for you know uh, you know development and piloting and, and such. A, but but for solutions, everyone is looking for solutions. Okay. And if it if it solves the problem, uh, it will be adopted. So it's not like people say well, we want to do the same. They understand they have uh, problems. They understand they want to improve. Uh, but only, but they, but they need something that is stable, that is reliable, uh, that you know doesn't cost time, but saves time. Uh, so every company, I, I believe, in, the, in this sector, in the construction technology sector, if they bring a really good solution and it is working and stable, it will be adopted. Uh, if it solves, a, if, if if it solves a real problem. All right. So. Um... I agree with your point, uh, Guy, that, you know, if you have a technology and if the technology is able to solve the problem, then, you know, um, getting that product uh, viral in the industry is not a big problem. However, I would like to know about the price range of this robot because uh, our industry is also very sensitive because of the increasing cost of the material, cost of labor, and you know, with, with the Ukraine war on one hand and the inflation going on, you know, overall across the globe, what is the price range, uh, you know, of this robot uh, which you guys have kept? Yeah, so of course, it, it really depends on geography, on the market, okay. and also yeah. on the application that the robot is solving. So yeah. the painting and plastering, the two different applications, and they are, uh, uh, the, they are priced differently. But we can say that uh, uh, in, in several applications, we have demonstrated the capability of the robot in terms of efficiency to perform the work of four people, okay. uh, me measured you know, in real projects, not in theory, in lab, uh, extrapolating from from ten minutes of work, but actually working for real uh, weeks in real yeah. projects, yeah. and 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 so you can understand that if a machine that the, the bill of materials, although it's not very uh, cheap or not very low cost, uh, is is limited, performing for a long period of time, the the, the work of four people, it can it will always bring return on investment. Okay. So the models can can be uh, varied and the prices can be varied uh, on, on geographies, but we can say that uh, in most of the 
business models of uh, leasing the robots uh, for long term or even for short term with projects with our distributor partners, uh, uh, customers will be able to save money and time from day one. So there's no capex, and uh, eventually during time uh, we'll also be able to to offer. Uh, uh, purchasing the, the robots themselves. Right now, it's only based on a robot as a service or, or leasing. Uh, and, and then also the return on investment will be very, very fast as it is shown in any other industry uh, that robotics and automation uh, you know, came to be. And so, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's- It depends it's, and it- It's cost very, saving. It's not, yeah. it's, not a, it's not a cost burden. Okay, so uh, you know uh, when you say the geography, what all are the market regions you are trying to penetrate as of now? You know. Yeah, so we're focusing today uh, all, all our pilots, uh, uh, projects, and uh, partners are, uh, or most of them, are focused in Germany. We have done a few pilots okay. in Israel as well, okay. uh, and and a few projects, uh, but we are aiming for. Uh, to expand to the US. Okay. Uh, and so we are starting to build our relationships uh, there, uh, hoping to, to get a, a robot on, on the ground, uh, not very far ahead, and to demonstrate the capabilities of the robots to strategic uh, um, uh, potential customers. And, uh, and eventually, yeah, so, so uh, Europe and, and US are our first markets. Uh, also, Asia is a very big uh, market that uh, we get a lot of inbounds and interest. Uh, it's going to be probably uh, the market uh, right after that. All right. Okay. Okay, Guy, I think last question for the session. And I uh, just wanted to know where do you see, uh, you know, Okibo and, you know, this robot playing a role in future? So where do you see what is there from now? Yeah, so I'm a really big believer in, in our product <laughs> and our company, uh, obviously. Uh, and, and yeah, and, and I'm also really proud of what we've built. Yeah. Uh, I think we've demonstrated some really unique capabilities. So there are many AMRs, many even uh, mobile manipulator robots, or not many, but some. But I don't think there are uh, a lot of products that are doing today what we are doing. So we build a platform that allows the robot to work with the manipulator while moving. It is like fully battery operated, yeah. carries its own material, a very large hopper, 95 liters of 25 guns is part of, of the robot and has a very wide range in terms of kinematic capabilities. So not only six degrees of freedom robotic yeah. manipulator, but also uh, telescopic vertical axis and horizontal axis and so forth and so on. Yeah. And, and we build a platform with very uh, uh, deep capabilities in terms of perception okay. and uh, autonomous planning of work. Yeah. And so uh, the sky is the limit. Yeah, of course. So we're starting with, with applications that are, have very huge uh, market and are very high demand, uh, but it's not going to be the end. Yeah. And, uh, and having uh, this kind of uh, machine uh, yeah. that's like, for example, one, one application that we've demonstrated doing roller painting of ceiling while the robot is moving continuously, uh, nonstop. This is, uh, you don't see a lot of robots doing, uh, you know, touching surfaces while they're moving, understanding the environment, planning their way, doing the corrections, doing all that. So this is, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a really uh, interesting uh, and very high potential uh, technology. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and even the construction industry is not the end. Yeah. Uh, which is by itself, of course, huge. And so, yeah, we, we think we're, we're, we're going to be big one day. <laughs> Definitely. And my best wishes to you and the entire team of Okibo. So that you know you reach uh, the biggest miles and whatever you have desired of. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for for uh, for hosting me and inviting me to your show.